Hello and welcome back to another episode of All The Gear, Some Idea. Lee's not here at the moment, um, unfortunately he's working. Um, predominantly it is obviously a bike that I'm going to be riding, so I just thought let's keep the content rolling, keep it going. We've got videos in the pipeline that will be released, hopefully we'll get a video released once a week. Uh, what I want to do is get two videos or a few more videos out there quicker um, just to try and build the amount of videos we've got so when people come along and watch a video they can actually go and, and watch them all um, and not just have one or two videos that you know the, the removing the engine I would probably say it could have been more in depth but the problems we experienced while doing it with the bolt being seized and stuff it just wouldn't have been interesting for you guys to watch and for us to pull an engine out if you need help doing it or you want some advice, or you want to know where something went after you've taken it off, by all means, contact us. Go to the email. We've, we've got stuff. Uh, we've got more footage, more photos and stuff of what we could put in there, but obviously it's limiting the amount of rubbish footage versus footage we had that might be interesting. Uh, I can guarantee the videos coming up that we've got uh, with me, me and Lee, uh, they're a bit more in-depth, um, and you'll get to see a lot more. Obviously, we're new to this. The whole editing thing is new. Recording is new. Um but yeah, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to be replacing the front and rear pads on the Mondial. Now, I've ordered them. Whether they're the right ones is another question. Um, they're in the packet behind me, so I will get them out. And hopefully I've got the right ones here and we can go and replace them and I can go through some bits that need to be checking while doing this as well. So keep watching. Anyway, right, there are the rears. So we've got some rears there. I think we're going to have two sets here and there's going to be a set of fronts and a set of rears in this packet. Yeah, so I will show you. So we've got some rear ones in here that aren't for this bike, which is fine. And we've got these ones here, which, oh, I don't know, they might be right. Yeah, that, that might be right. So there are these ones here. Um, so what we're going to do is remove the caliper. I believe it's this big one here. Yeah, so that is, for your front caliper, is an 8mm Allen key. Um, so we've got it on quarter drive because they're not going to be massively tight because it's just a bike. So we don't need much more than this. So we'll just get these out. Normally I'd use a gun, but um, I don't want the threads that I like on it. I don't want to damage anything and... So we will just remove them by hand. Right, so that one's out on the bottom. And we're going to pull this much, pretty much all the way out anyway. There we go. Right, so now the caliper's going to slide off, he says. So one of the key things I'd recommend not doing right now is pulling the brake lever or putting your foot on the rear brake because these have a but yeah so they've got a central braking system which would mean you don't want to be putting your foot on the rear brake or on the, your hand on the front brake because if you was to push the rear brake or the pull the front brake these this gap here is going to get closer and closer and there's a potential that the pistons might pop out because of the central braking system, when you put your foot on the rear brake, uh, I believe it's, it's sort of, it applies to all, but I know for sure the front brake, pull that, that will apply a little bit of brake to the rear and obviously a normal brake to the front. Let's continue. So we need another Allen key now, which is down here. And we're gonna, yep, so it's that. So this is a five mil Allen key. So we've just used a, Eight for the big bolts, uh, five for these pins. So I'm going to adjust the camera so you can actually see what I'm doing. There you go, it's a bit better. At least I'm going to try and undo these. There we go. A little bit tight, but mm, sorry, nothing to worry about. Once again, there we go. So they're now both undone. Now these should just be pins that come out, so they should be threaded at this end, which they are. So they're threaded at this end here, and it's just the pin that runs through. Right out. OK. 
control. Oh, it's always the case. It's either really loose on the ratchet and you get nothing when you're doing it. Right, so that pins out. So I'm going to clean this pin up anyway because it is a bit dirty, uh, which is to be expected due to the road grime and all that sort of stuff. So that's actually out now. So this pin just needs pulling out. A bit of gentle persuasion, but I just keep turning it around to try and pry it out. There we go. So that's now come out. And what's happened is this pad has now dropped out into my hand. So as you can see, I've got some slight grooving on the pad. Now that's fine. And if I feel the disc, I can feel the disc is slightly worn um, and it's it's taking its shape. Um, and the, the pad has essentially taken shape to the disc. Um, but you can see how thin they are compared to each other. So if we come in here, let me get you some better light. So you can see this is the new pad and this is the old pad, how much how much I've actually got left of the pad. Um, and you can feel when riding it that it's not, um, it's not as it should be. You can feel it's a bit graunchy, which would be, if this goes down any more here, in fact, you can see it's unevenly worn. So if I hold it there, you can see that this end here is a lot thinner than this end here. Now that could be due to the way that the caliper has been fitted. If it's been fitted wonky and it's pushing against it wonky. So what you need to do, I'll go through it when we get to it. Um, I just need to make sure these are definitely the right pads. Otherwise we are, look at that. Look at that. That is absolutely perfect. So if you do own a HPS Mondial and you're after brakes, I'll put a link in the description actually. So I looked how much they were for a genuine set. Um, and for a genuine set of front brake pads was 50 pounds. Now I've paid a lot less for car, car pads um, before. Um, so wasn't overly keen on paying 50 pounds for some pads. Now I do understand brakes are a uh, important vital part, especially on a motorbike, cars the same. You know, I do understand you've got to pay for, for quality and all that sort of stuff. But I do believe £50 is over the mark when you can buy um, the same quality, but for over half the price. Now, this is what Lee was saying the other day about fitting the engine, about finding out the part number and going that way. So what I had to do was take measurements of the pads. So the gap between these two bits here, this bit and this bit, and then go through it that way to make it so that I knew what size I needed. So now what we need to do is you've got four pistons in here. We need to push those back. Now I'm going to try with my screwdriver, but I think I'm going to need to get a different tool. So we're going to put a screwdriver in there and push back. So you see this one here is now back further than this one here. So we'll do the same on this one. So now that one there has gone back in at the top there. So I've got that one in and that one in. You also need to be making sure that the reservoir for where the brake fluid is hasn't been topped up. Or what I've done is I've opened the two screws at the top up to make it so that it's... um. It's not going to be putting any pressure on the cap inside. So that's two pushback now. I'm trying to find the best angle with the light and everything. So then we're going to push this one here back. That's a bit, a bit tighter than the other one, so we push this one back. There you go. So you, now the top one's popped back out slightly, which is normal. It's just working its way through to push the pads back. So what you could do... If you found that these two, when you're pushing them back, it's pushing these back and vice versa, you can find something that fits in that gap to stop it from coming back out again. I'm just going to swap hands and do the same again on this side. Go, and this one. Yeah, so this is what I was saying. If I push that, if I'm, I'm pushing this top one, and then this one here is um, being pushed back. So I'm gonna grab a different tool for this. So what we don't wanna happen is for the piston to come out too far. And then basically, we're gonna lose all our brake fluid. Okay, so when dealing with this sort of stuff, you need to be really careful with brake, brake fluid. Um, so I'd crack the top off my thing, but it had actually, my reservoir, but it's, we're still kind of sealing it. So what I'm hoping now is I'll just be able to push this back by hand, which I can. Right, so they're all pushed back now, as you can see. 
All right, I just need to do quickly is check this reservoir. She's right at the top. So I've got a bit of rag around here to prevent any spillage onto anything. You also need to make sure you keep it clean. Right then. Cool, so now that they're off and the pads are pushed back, we need to refit the new pads. So, they just slot in. Right, the pins have been cleaned up, so they're no longer got any corrosion on them. And it's now time to fit the pads. So you've got a spring that sits back here. Can't really see it, the light's not very good, sorry. And they slot in either side, like so. So now they're slotted in, you have to push them back against the spring. Right, so now the pads oh, are fitted. We're in their rough locations. Need to pull them back out because it's flopping around. So what we're going to do is we're going to just spread them across so they're roughly where they need to be. And then we've got the pins here. So as I say, when you put it in, you have to push down on the pad and you'll feel that it slides through. And then you push down on the next one and it should then locate in its hole. Butt it up against the thread on this side. So what we now need to do is we just concentrate on one side at a time. We're going to just wind that back in so it starts. As I said, I've cleaned them up. Now that's started, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the other side, and grab the pin, slide that into there with the pad pushed up. There we go, and you'll feel it locate, and then the other one goes up. So that one's not located. Pull that back out, push that back up. I'm going to do this up. So that goes tight. We go back to the other one. Do that one back up. Do that one back up. That's tight then. So that one's nipped up. So it's that one. So there we go. There we have it. So you see the gap now we've got in there. And we've also got, so they're, they're fairly free in there. And we've got the gap where the uh, disc goes into. So we're going to let that hang because, like I said earlier, if you was to do it up um, and it was twisted, you wouldn't have any brakes on the front and you don't want that. So then we're going to slide that over the disc, bring that up, put one bolt in, find the other one that in just so they're lining up where they need to be and do these ones up now you may need to clean your calipers out you may need to grease your pads um, I've stuck a little bit of grease in there already. So that's nipped, but we've got a little, we've got something else to do in between this. So you, the uneven wear, because those pistons inside went back, the uneven wear won't be from a faulty piston on the caliper. So we're going to just loosen that off slightly, come back up, loosen that one off. So now we have movement in that caliper, just enough that we can grab hold of it and move it. So what we're now going to do is grab hold of the brake lever and we're going to pump the pump the pad, uh, pump the lever a few times. That's going to then push the brake fluid down into the pads, push them against the disc, and that will then essentially self-line 
the caliper up with the disc so they're going to even wear evenly. Um, at least that's what I believe will happen rather than just trying to guess. So also when you pump it, you'll notice that the fluid is going to start going down. So if you still got the cap off, be very careful because it's going to start dropping. Oh, there we go. So now holding that in, I've got force against that. And I'm going to refit this stuff up here. Right, so that's now back on up there. If I do this, and then do these up, so they're nipped up, my hand on the brake lever, and then gonna do them back up. Like so, and then test the brake. Cool, so always remember to pump the brakes after you push the pistons back because there's that travel in between of when you're pushing that fluid into it that it's actually got to then touch and then it will automatically spring itself away. If you don't do that and you just whacked it back on again, you're going to take it out for a ride. What happens is every time you put your foot on that hand on the lever and you pull it, you need your brakes. That pedal, that lever will go all the way in and you won't have any brakes and you've got to keep pumping until the brakes come back. So always make sure you pump the lever before you go ahead and ride the bike when you go to ride the bike you'll find it, it ain't going to be very responsive to start with because you need to bed those pads in especially on an old disc like this one so when i ride it i'll make sure i'm riding slow or well, not slow but i'm riding to the conditions of what i've got to ride it to so it won't be very fast if you're going down the road apply a bit of brake in continue again apply a bit more brake in leave a lot of like leave a big gap in front from wherever it was in front of you car bike bus lorry um because you're gonna have to bed these brakes in uh, everyone has their own way of doing it but <clears throat> just be warned if you do this that you won't have very responsive brakes for a few miles until the pads have actually bedded in so right so that's done then so we're we're all good with what we've done there and as i say you saw how i lined that front break up because otherwise you'd be wearing them unevenly and you'd be changing them sooner than should be right i've just had a little look at these uh these pads and uh they don't need replacing on the ring so i'm gonna leave them for the time being so i have already taken this clip off um i know it's a 13 mil uh to remove the caliper and then there's some funky mechanism inside with the slider. So now if I do this, because I pushed it back using the screwdriver, she's locked in, she's free. She's locked, she's free, she's locked. There you go. So that's all good. The problem I've got now is this cap's falling off. Okay, there at least I can get to it. Oh no, it's because it's already broken. That's all right. It's fine. Oh my god. Right, anyway, the rear brake now works. I mean, it worked before, but. It just, um. It wasn't the, it wasn't the rear to be fed that needs to be done. So this under here, uh, up there, is that central braking system. So this bit here that my finger's on is where a massive spider of cabling goes or, or brake pipes go and that's how it works right as you can see we just changed the front pads <clears throat> i have had a change of clothes mainly because i've listened back to the audio of the end of that video and there was no audio on it slightly annoying um but you know we're still learning we've got some new mics um so there'd be videos with the mics without the mics just depending on when we've recorded these videos so the front brakes are done i have already ridden the bike um, check that it's all bedded in and that the, the lever feels really good now. Uh, the braking response is a lot better, whereas before I was finding it was graunchy and it was really unresponsive. Um, so I do need to do a brake fluid change as well, front and rear. Uh, you have got that central braking system, but I've already put a, a rough, that's where it sort of sits. Um, still don't quite know how it works, need to look into that. Um, like I say, we're just trying to get some videos out there that is 
uh, quick videos, although this has turned into about a 20 minute video for some front pads. Hopefully the information in there will help you be able to do it, you know, what tools you need um, and what you're looking for um, in regards of seized calipers um, and making sure that it's not going to be unevenly wearing on those um, pads that you fit into it. So thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. Uh, hopefully I've helped somebody, at least one person out there to do their, their front pads on their bike. Uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe, share and press the little bell icon. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.